Hi everybody, I'm John, this is Belinda, and our two volunteers today are Scott and Barbara. Volunteers are really important here because they do the sanitizing while we have the animals out. And they have to do it pretty quickly so that we don't put the bird back in and lock the door off. Not that we would do that, right? So Belinda and I have been working with raptors for 14 years, 19 years, a long, long, long time. Um, RTH Speedwagon is a red tail hawk. We call him Speedy and we'll show you why. He came from Pennsylvania. He was at a rehab facility and they put out an email to all of the professional trainers around the country. Does anybody want a red tail hawk? We got to get him a home. They had him in this facility from the time he was very young for a year and did not have room for him. We said, we'll take him, we'll take him. So they sent us Speedy. We opened his crate door and he walked out. Now there's something wrong with that picture. He's a hawk. He's a year old. He's supposed to be flying. He could not fly. I felt his keel muscles that are right next to his breastbone. There was nothing there. It was like jelly. So we knew he had probably been in that crate or a very small enclosure for his whole first year. He literally did not know how to fly. So I had to teach him how to fly with help from Belinda. And here he is. So now he knows how to fly, as you can see. We're going to show you, we don't call him Speedy because he's particularly fast. We call him Speedy because of his foot speed. Red tail hawks are one of the only or few hawks or animals that know how to catch and kill and eat rattlesnakes in the wild. And we're going to show you how he does that. How old is he now? He's a little over two, two and a half maybe. Um, this is his not real rattlesnake. Everybody <laughs> calm down. Speedy, look what I got. My rattlesnake wrestling character. <laughs> Here you go. Want to get it? Watch how he does this. Good. You noticed he grabbed the head? Yeah. I'll do it three or four more times so everybody gets a chance to see it. Good job. You want to let go? He probably wants to let go, but he can't. Young raptors have something called sticky foot. When they grab something, the tendons in their legs ratchet down, and they have to relax to let go. And it's very hard to relax when you're holding a rattlesnake by the head. Do you want him to fly? There he goes. Good. So Speedy looks like a red-tailed hawk you would see in the Audubon book. He is a perfect specimen of a red-tailed hawk. Down there. You can do this, go. He is not happy. Let me get the rocks out of it and I'll give it to you. <laughs> Boy, he's watching me. Oh, there it is. There it is. Down there. Here it comes. All right, now it's up here where it's okay. There's still one rock. Who cares? Good job, Speedy. You dropped a piece. I'm not getting it. So, not only do they have great vision, but they have excellent strength in their talent. They catch and kill with the talons, the feet. I'm not afraid of his beak, I'm afraid of his feet. They have 45 pounds of gripping strength in each talon. So if they grab something, they're going to hold on to it. Um, 
Most raptors do not make it to one year of age. No, they hit, they hit windows, they run into fences, they go down after something and don't break quickly enough. All sorts of bad things happen. They break their wings. Their bones are hollow, so any impact with anything can be bad or worse than bad. The guy that's coming out right now is Garfunkel. We have two of these, Simon and Garfunkel. This is Garfunkel. I don't want him to see this. Uh, remember I told you this is an owl? This is a great horned owl, the biggest owl we have in Arizona. Garfunkel is significantly larger than a great horned owl. You'll see that in a He has a wingspan of six feet, four inches. A typical great horned owl has about a four foot wingspan. So this is a great horned owl. Garfunkel is a Eurasian eagle owl. So Eurasian eagle owls are not found here in the United States or North America. They are native to Europe and Asia. Come here. Now listen carefully as he flies over. Ooh. Except for the squawk, you probably didn't hear anything. We named our two owls Simon and Garfunkel. Sounds of silence. Okay, you guys aren't old enough to hear. The song is way back when. I get to sit on the. I get to sit on the throne of thrills. That's this thing right here, and the reason it's thrilling is because owls fly very low, and they come up at the last second. Remember that part. Come up at the last second to slow them down and stop. So I'm going to sit right here, and Belinda's going to call Garfunkel, and he's going to go up at the last second. <laughs> Oh, ooh. <laughs> a little bit. Just a touch. <laughs> Is there any blood? <laughs> now, I told you about Speedy's talon strength, right? This animal has 10 times that strength. 450 pound grip in each talon. What does that mean? If he grabs a raccoon or something, it's not getting away. Once he grabs onto something, forget it. In fact, we've worked with bald eagles for years and years. A desert bald eagle has 150, 150 grip. This guy has three times that strength. Why is that important? Well, first of all, he doesn't have to build a nest, ever. He just lands in the nest of any bird that he seems to like. And whatever that bird is, it turns around and leaves, <laughs> including a bald eagle. Bald eagles will not mess with that. We look at the beaks and we go, oh, look at that huge beak. Other birds look at the feet. Those feet are literally 450 vice grips with needles on the end. to see what she'll do. So she, this is an American crow, and crows are very leery uh, about the surroundings. So they're part of the corvid family. You guys probably see ravens all over the place, right? McDonald's, Wendy's. They like that kind of stuff. Crows, we hear them, but don't necessarily see them. Would you like to say wait? She's in her beak. <laughs> so 
Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Come here, Aplomado falcons used to be prevalent in Arizona, but because of cattle ranching and farming in the late 1800s, this long time ago, the yucca cactus that they like to nest in disappeared. So with the loss of that plant, they ended up in northern Mexico. They're no longer in Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona like they used to be. The Peregrine Fund is reintroducing them, just like they did the condors in the Grand Canyon. We, uh, this is quail that he's getting. So I have a whole quail cut up, and <laughs> I'm talking about you. Stop it. Notice the black stripe going down from his eye, just like a football player. When they look back up in the sun, they don't want the sun's light to reflect into their eyes, so they put lamp block under their eyes. He's got that built in. He also has a cone in his nostril, just like the cone in a jet engine. And that helps control the flow of air. The faster he goes, the further forward he pushes it, so it blocks a little of the air. A um, lot of other really cool adaptations that make him extraordinary. You did a good job, good. So you might hear some crunching as he eats this because it is a whole quail. He's going to eat today, and he does every day, a quarter of his body weight. You guys do the math, what that would mean for you. <laughs> for me, that would be a 40 pound steak every single day. That's a little much, right? With but the bones. <laughs> with the bones, yeah, they have to eat the bones to get calcium. That's very important. So you might hear him crunching a little bit. Hey, good. Notice how agile he is. This is the falcon that they use in Sonoma vineyards to chase away the birds that eat grapes. A flock of birds in Sonoma can cost you four million dollars in two hours. So it's really important to get rid of them. That's called abatement. And they use this falcon to do that. Why do they use this falcon? Because he can fly in between the vines of the, of the grapes. So all the other birds are terrified when they see an aplomato coming towards them. They don't even have to have them catch any, any other birds. They just see this and they know that's bad news. I don't want to be here. Good job. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I've got the quail's wing, wings in my pocket, and I'm going to toss a quail wing up in the air over his head. So keep your eyes out, because this happens very quickly. We're going to see if he can flip upside down. They fly upside down just about as well as they do right side up. They hover. They're just amazing animals. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what he's got? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go home with it. Go oh, home. Wow. <laughs> he's hoping I toss him another one. Yes. I do have another one, but go home. I'll throw it in there. <laughs> 